life was quiet all around Cute little island, nice and non-violent But everything turned upside down When a new guy came to town We got along, he showed me ways To craft and test things, back on intestines Said we could party at his place All the holidays Jack from the Bloody Jack channel and I know it's been a long ass time since I've done a part 4 to my top 100 video games of all time because I've been very busy with the last of my, well with the ending parts of my college work and also with my 20th birthday I know I was gonna say I'm gonna I was gonna try and make as many as I can until my 20th birthday but I it kind of just flew over my head entirely when I ended up making these. So, without wasting any time whatsoever, <clears throat> Jesus got hay fever already during these troubling times, we have got number 31 to 40, and we're almost halfway through this show, so, well, this series, so let's see if we can get through as much of it as we can until if your country's in lockdown like mine is we'll see how it gets so starting off with 31 we got the Batman Arkham series which started from 2009 and it's still technically going on to this day uh, the game the first game of the series not of the timeline but by release date is Batman Arkham Asylum which came out in 2009 on the Xbox 360 on the PS3 and on the PC and even got a remaster with the Batman Arkham collection on the PS4, Xbox One, PC and Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's basically just set in the... I, well as my perspective I like to see it as it takes place in the same universe as the Batman animated series from the 90s because it has Kevin Conroy playing Batman and Mark Hamill playing the Joker. But yeah, Arkham Asylum is set on Arkham Island where Batman's just taking the Joker out for a little while and yeah, just sends him there to lock up, well to be locked up, but Joker escapes and um, releases this new formula called um, Titan which transforms inmates into huge hideous monsters. It's basically a tweaked version of the same stuff that makes Bane all huge and muscly into a big beefcake. Uh, but yeah, there's loads of great bad guys you face in the game like Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, um, Bane, Scarecrow, Killer Croc, and the Joker, and Victor Zaz. Um, the only annoying thing I would say about the game is it's very short. You can easily beat the game in like three or four hours tops. Like with just going straight ahead with the gameplay. I mean you could I could easily be in it in a day. Like if there's nothing I'm doing during the day, I literally just dedicate the whole two like three to four hours I have of spare time into beating um, Arkham Asylum. I even got it on my laptop because it was it's that good. A decent start of the series. Then you've got Arkham City, which came out in 2011 on Xbox 360, PS3, and um, PC. Also, yeah, it was added to the Arkham Collection for its remaster. Uh, it's set a couple years after Arkham Asylums happened. Basically, uh, one of the underrated bad guys, Hugo Strange, has been 
um, given the ability to expand Arkham Asylum and the Blackgate Prison by turning a whole portion of Gotham City into a, ver a big version of Arkham. Like a self-contained part of the city where it's just criminals only. Uh, there's more bad guys in the game. Uh, you've got Mr. Freeze, uh, the Mad Hatter, um, the, the head of the demon, like um, Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul, depending on the universe you're looking at it. Uh, also, Robin turns up at one point, it's really good. Uh, Clayface is also in the game. But yeah, uh, the main plot of that game is the fact that Joker is dying of the same Titan toxin from Arkham Asylum, but he's also infected Batman with it, so Batman only has a few hours to um, find a cure. So he has to find the Penguin, and which will, who will give him some answers, and then eventually lead on to other bad guys throughout the series, well, throughout the Batman lore. Then, in 2015, you have, well, 2014, 2015, depending on what country you lived in, or well, live in even, uh, Batman Arkham Origins came out. Uh, it's not a part of the Arkham collection, believe it or not, because it, was develop it wasn't developed by Rocksteady Studios. Um, it's set 10 years before um, Arkham Asylum, and it's basically how Batman met the Joker. And you've got additional villains like an original design of Killer Croc, Bane, uh, Deathstroke, Electrocutioner, Deadshot, and um, Kit I want to say Kitana and Firefly. But yeah, I think it's it's okay for what it is. Then you've got uh, Batman Arkham Knight, which I'm not going to spoil because I think that game was pretty damn good. If you're going to get a decent version of the game, I would say either get the Arkham Collection or just get all the Game of the Year editions. You get all the deal, you get the best DLCs out of it, especially with Arkham City, because you get the expanded story, which happens after, and also you get the Catwoman DLC, which has, which takes place during the main campaign. But yeah, moving forwards, Far Cry 3: Blood Dragon came out in 2013. Hands down, probably one of my top favourite Far Cry games that I've played. I mean, it's got a nice retro game style to it. I mean, it kind of reminds me a lot of Tron Legacy and Tron Evolution, when those games were, I want to say, um, relevant. <laughs> but yeah, the style of that game it's actually what got me into the Far Cry series. And if it wasn't for that game, I wouldn't have played Far Cry 1, a little bit of Far Cry 2, played the absolute shit out of Far Cry 3. Uh, Far Cry 4, yeah, it was alright. It's not the best in my personal opinion. And Far Cry 5. I haven't played um, the most recent Far Cry game, mostly because I'm very judgmental against it, just judging by the trailer. But would I recommend Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon? Yes, I would. You can still get it on uh, Xbox One, PS4, and on PC. But yeah, not wasting any time with that game. Moving forwards, Mirror's Edge, which came out in 2008. Uh, it's a simple first-person platformer. Well, speed-running platformer. And it's kind of like a rebellion game, like... Rise to a rebellion or whatever. Basically, this woman is trying to solve a murder mystery that her, I want to say, twin, either twin sister or younger sister got involved in. So now she's being held prisoner and you're down to solve that shit out. But yeah. Um, decent game. Great style, great gameplay on this game, and it's VR compatible. It's backwards compatible on the Xbox One and the PS4. I would definitely recommend get either version, or if you really want to do it out, play in VR on PC, where you would probably get the best kicks out of it. Uh, what do I think of the sequel, Mirror's Edge Catalyst? I haven't played it, so I can't really put an opinion on it. 
but I did actually have a, um, a decent time actually playing the game. Moving on, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which came out in 2003 on the original Xbox and actually just the original Xbox because it was a um, console exclusive. Um, as a fan of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show, um, this, series, this game came out at the same time as the final season of the show, but it is canon to the actual show's story. It takes place during season 3. Uh, it's got the same actress, Sarah Michelle Gellar and David Boreanaz and, and James Masters and loads of other of the great actors from the show reprising their role as their characters. Um, yeah, basically, the master from season one has come back, well, is trying to come back from being defeated by Buffy in the first season, well, in the first season of the show, but he's using the help of Spike, who is summoning three vampire warlords from, long, from a long lost history to basically improve on the cult of a, well, the Order of Aurelius. So it's down to Buffy, Xander, Willow, and Giles, and Cordelia, unfortunately, to and Angel as well occasionally, to stop the Order of Aurelius from bringing back the Master from his death. Uh, if you're a fan of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, you may have heard of the game. Um, I would also recommend you guys check out the spin-off, because it's not canon to the show. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds. But I would recommend you checking out this game first. If you're a huge fan of the series, and if you like not only the TV show, but maybe the movie and the comic books as well. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend you check that out. Uh, next, uh, Shadows of the Damned, which came out in 2011 on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 and PC. Um, basically, the whole plot of the game, it's made by the same guy that uh, made Silent Hill and the music composer for Resident Evil. Uh, you play as a Mexican demon slayer called Garcia Hotspur, who has a low-level demon who's a flaming skull can't remember his name but he basically serves as your main weapon in the game and you basically gotta go through the underworld to um, find or basically trying to look for your girlfriend who has been kidnapped by the, a demon overlord so it's down to you to kill all the shadow demons by lighting up all through the darkness of hell and killing all the high-class demon bosses along the way. Uh, the game's backwards compatible, so I would definitely recommend you guys would check it out if you like third-person shooters like God of, not God of War, um, Gears of War. <laughs> so yeah, if you like playing third-person shooters like Gears of War or Dead Space or Mass Effect, I would definitely recommend you guys checking that out. Or if you like action horror games like Resident Evil. If you like that kind of gameplay style, definitely go for it and check that shit out right away. Next, we have uh, two games. I know I'm cheating here like I've done with other games throughout this whole series. Uh, the Darkness and The Darkness 2. Uh, both came out on PC and Xbox 360 and the PS3. Uh, based on the comic book series The Darkness from the 90s by Image Comics and Top Cow Comics as well. Uh, you play as the main character of the of said comic book series, Jack Yastacano, who on his 21st birthday inherits the power of the Darkness, who is an ancient evil being that works in the dark and you can summon demons and shit, slice limbs off bad guys, eating their hearts and summoning little imp demons that have vastly different abilities. I liked the first game when I first played it. Um, it got me to read the comic books 
considering there's a major difference between the comic books and the games. As in, Jackie Estacado in the comic books is most of the time a straight up villain because he is a part of the Mafia, which is technically in the game as well. Um, also, the fact that he has, like, his best friend in the comic books, Jenny, is his girlfriend in the game. And also the fact that Jack Yesticado is, like, edgelord times a thousand. But, yeah, in the first game, you learn about the darkness very slowly, but you got to fill out, like, loads of side tasks, and also you've got to try and stop Jack Yesticado's uncle, Paulie, to wait to kill him, who's put a hit on him for not for, for basically not going through with the job that he's been set to do. But in the process he ends up killing yeah, Paulie ends up murdering Jackie's girlfriend Jenny right in front of him. So Jack, it's a revenge story mostly of Jackie trying to build his way up to the top of the mafia of the Franchetti crime family. And then you've got the sequel, The Darkness 2, where the this, I want to say, not Christian cult, but it's like the order of, I want to say, not the Angelus, or the Scythe, basically Jackie Estacado is fighting against this cult, and they are um, basically trying to steal the darkness from Jackie. Uh, I would recommend you guys play the first game, and then play the second one. They're both fantastic games, and if you want to, I would also recommend you guys check out reading the comic books as well, if you uh, guys ever come across them. Furthermore, we have Lollipop Chainsaw, which came out in 2011 on PC, Xbox 360, and the PS3. And I think it may or may not have had a Nintendo Wii release, I may be wrong. But yeah, it's a third-person action platformer where you play as, I want to say, Julie, who is basically a cheerleader who comes from a family of zombie hunters, and the world is being taken over by this bad guy who wants to cross over the underworld and the world of the living, so basically pure evil will rule forever. So, and it's also Julie's 18th birthday, and this first, just the first level of the game is fantastic. It's got a comic book style feel to it, it's got a very evil dead sense of humour to it, and also if you're a fan of old, like, classic zombie movies, you will get all the references that are hidden throughout the game. Uh, but yeah. Moving on, Alice the Madness Returns, which came out in 2011 on the Xbox 360, PC, and PS3, and is backwards compatible. Um, it's a sequel to the 2001 game American McGee's Alice. Um, I don't, I can't remember how many years it's set after, but basically Alice goes back to Wonderland. But now that she's older, things are starting to go horribly, horribly wrong. With basically, Alice is feeling loads of guilt with the death of her parents. So she's been locked up in a mental institute for the past 10 years. And now that she's out and basically trying to get on with her life, but somehow keeps going back to Wonderland, her, whatever's left of her sanity is slowly being shattered with this gigantic cathedral looking train. So Alice has to go through all over Wonderland she has, where she's teamed up with the Cheshire Cat and has a huge arsenal of weapons from a pepper grinder which acts like a machine gun with the Vorpal Blade which killed the Jabberwocky, a horse which acts like a giant mace and a teapot which shoots acidic tea it's got a massive Tim Burton, like, early, early Tim Burton style to it. Like, if you know what I'm on about, I want to say, like, Nightmare Before... A combination of, like, Nightmare Before Christmas and Batman Returns kind of edginess to it. I would highly recommend 
that kind of game. It's also got like a, I want to say, Devil May Cry slash Ninja Gaiden kind of feel to it. So if you really want to get into that kind of gameplay, definitely check that shit out. Uh, next we have Assassin's Creed Origins. The first, and I... Not looking further through this list, but I believe it's the only Assassin's Creed game I've added onto this list. It was going to be a mix-up between Assassin's Creed 3, Origins, and Odyssey, but I am going to have to stick with Origins on this one because it changed the gameplay style of the franchise forever. It changed it from a stealth action platforming based game to an action RPG game which I fucking like to play. I put so many hours into this game, I almost 100 percent of it. Um, also, it's set in ancient Egypt, which I love that kind of setting, because one of my favourite movies would be The Mummy and The Scorpion King. But yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins is a revenge story, and it's also the origins on how the assassins actually came to be. Um, but yeah, you play as Bayek, who is the Magi of the Pharaoh, but it's a revenge story on him trying to take out a cult who murdered his son some time ago. So he has been hell-bent on training and perfecting weapons and gaining information about the cult. I'd say between Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla, which has just been announced, um, I would say it's one of the best Assassin's Creed games I've played in a long time. But yeah, if you want to play a good Assassin's Creed game that's in the style of an RPG, definitely start with Origin. It's so good with dialogue choices and so forth. But yeah, further on, uh, finally, as the 10th spot on this episode, Half-Life 2, which came out in 2004. Obviously, the choice is obvious. I couldn't... Well, I'm very sure if you go onto anyone's top favourite list, they'll have a Half-Life game in there somewhere. The only reason why I've put Half-Life 2 specifically, it's the first Half-Life game I've actually played. Um, I had the orange box on the 360. I played the absolute hell out of Half-Life 2. I borrowed a copy of Half-Life 1 because it's backwards compatible. Um, I did play... I did download Half-Life 2 for the free weekend we had recently because of Half-Life Alex coming out in VR. I did play Half-Life 1, I've played Half-Life 2, I've played Episode 1 and 2 as well. I haven't played Half-Life Alex because I don't even own a VR headset. But yeah, um, everyone knows about Half-Life 2 so there's really no point in me explaining it. If you haven't played Half-Life 2, I would highly recommend you play any game in the Half-Life franchise. If you're a big fan of anything by Valve, which means in like Portal, uh, Left 4 Dead, and like I have no other. Oh, and Team. I want to say Team Fortress, but that's good. That's jumping a huge. That's jumping the gun there a little bit. But yeah, that was. 31 to 40 of my top 100 video games of all time. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I will progress through the series. We are almost halfway through the series. I will get around to making the final episode at some point. Also, I am debating whether or not to actually play Doom Eternal like making a whole gameplay series of it or I'm just gonna carry on playing Ghostbusters and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot for the time being so other than that there's nothing else I have to add on I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have an awesome time